discuss what the greenhouse at Dalhousie is because it is um, so unique. Um, in fact, it is the first time that there's ever been a Deloitte greenhouse on a campus in the world. Is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. We are the pilot project for the international greenhouse. So, <laughs> yes. and yeah, no pressure. Like <laughs> I was told that about a day or two before, because then you followed up with, and you are the first educator yes. to ever be in one of these. And I was like, okay, I'm going to ensure that we're stepping up the A game. Um, it's the A plus game. Um, and so I, I want to share with you um, briefly how we used it. Uh, and that was, you know, co-create, um, first working with my TA to create some active learning activities. We always do, um, Adele, try to, you know, get students to apply things because that's what you need to do in the workplace. So it's like learn, do, teach. <clears throat> Part of that doing is being immersive and really taking it a step further. So I worked with Anna, our TA, and we created some active learning activities for the first four or five classes. And then students had to go in groups of three and create their own active learning for various topics throughout the semester and use the space, use the space um, in a creative way, really focusing on both accurate content, but also engagement. So they were marked and evaluated on engagement. And I will tell you that I am so glad that I, I tried to provide direction, but with very little like do this and this and this, because the creativity that came from them was um, more than I could ever, ever come up with. <laughs> so for example, um, we had Jeopardy which was fabulous. Awesome. Um, we had, you know, some good quizzes and some, and, but different, some were team-based, some were race-based, some were MCQs, some were, you know, kind of um, a minute to win it sort of um, scenario. <laughs> <laughs> and we played squid game at school. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> zero technology but the space allowed for um everybody like they were like start at the back of the room and then it was big steps and you start to see people's competitive spirits come out and <laughs> even though, like, oftentimes some students brought prizes some didn't but that didn't impact the engagement in the sense that people wanted to demonstrate their knowledge they wanted to get you know nitty-gritty with it and you know it was just a really, really fun um, thing because I hadn't ever kind of co-created accounting curriculum, especially for, you know, a very difficult technical um, accounting topic before. And so, you know, I definitely, when they were uncomfortable, I was uncomfortable and we got through it together <laughs> and I finalized grades last night. And I just want to say like, thank you um, to you both for being right down the hall for basically every class for every email um, and any time there was either a tech issue or a perceived issue um, and just space, you know, how do I open this door? How do I do this? And being very welcoming. And I know our students, um, I'm excited for them to see this and get to meet the real, the real team behind um, all of the efforts. So cheers to you, salute to you and cheers to our pilot students because they are the pilot students as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> And, and I think the ability for them to dive in and embrace, right? I can only imagine walking into that space the first day of class and going, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Like it, it doesn't look like a classroom. It doesn't feel like a classroom. All the things you would expect for a classroom are not there. Um, and, and to embrace the experience and just run with it and have fun with it, right? The, the, the space is built to have fun and to engage and immerse. And I'm, I am grateful that the students actually sort of put all their uncomfortableness aside and dove in two feet uh, to make it really what it should be and what we were hoping it to be. We, you know, when we started this journey, we didn't have any idea what it was going to be like or how it was going to be perceived by the university. You know, we knew from our our perspective from a client perspective, how the space would get used, um, but didn't have any line of sight into um, the acceptance from the professors or the instructors or the students. Um, and the the feedback we've been getting has been great. Um, we're, you know, constantly getting, can we use a room? Can we use a room? Mm -hmm. So, you know, <laughs> we've been trying to, to be as accommodating as possible so that um, everybody has the opportunity to get in there and to experience it and to have their students experience it in a way that is impactful for them. So we're super jazzed to be there. And, you know, we're happy to be down the hall and to help out any way we can, because that's part of our mission. 
not just to, to sort of serve our clients, but also to serve the community in a way that's different. And, and the Dalhousie community is one of those, one of those stakeholders. And, you know, look, Rika and I are going to be completely honest. <laughs> we much prefer going to work on campus at Dalhousie. Yes. <laughs> there's an energy, like there's just an energy around yeah. being around students that is way more fun for us. So, you know, we're happy to be there to help you. <laughs> yes, definitely. And I will say one of my favorite aspects of the semester was coming in the day after your class. And we had it on Tuesdays and Thursdays and seeing all the different ways that students had set it up the day before before for class. This is different every single time. So clearly the space was being utilized in a, a maximal potential way. <laughs> well, I'm glad that was yeah, evident. Definitely not that you were like, why didn't you set it back up? <laughs> oh no, we were like, what were they doing yesterday? Yeah, exactly. Like what happened? <laughs> Paint a picture for everybody. There is um, a modular couch on one side. There's a whole uh, line of whiteboards. There's two smart boards at the front. Um, then there's more whiteboards, some beautiful windows, um, whiteboards at the back that open on these barn doors to a secret cafe. Um, <laughs> and then an extra storage space for more chairs and um and tables. And then in the space itself, there's you know just lots of modular options with standing up, um, sitting down tables, um, lots of chairs with kind of individual desks, lots of, um, oh my gosh, just tables and chairs. And we call them poofs. I don't know if they're actually, they're like footstools, but yeah, you sit on them. And then there's, poofs. Okay. Yeah. And then <laughs> modular tables that you can either sit at or, you know, put stuff on. So lots of like, there's limitless options. Um, and then also the spinny top chairs. And so. And the surface is, hubs. Hmm? And the surface hubs. Oh my gosh, and the service hubs, which were <laughs> amazing. Um, so my prof, my prof friends actually came in and uh, the other fourth year county profs were like, I want to see like what, what y'all up to in the greenhouse space. And so they came in and it happened to be one where we were rotating between um, whiteboards and surface hubs. And, um, and then it was, they, they watched me do a presentation. Uh, they watched me do a kind of a lesson and walk through. And then it was a contest on who could get the fastest and most accurate. And then they had to swap and march, mark each other's. And yeah, like my prof friends were like, whoa, like what's going on? <laughs> and by the end, they were like, oh, like, you know, how are the grades going to be transferred? Like, what, what's the reward? What's this and that? And I was like, oh, no, there's nothing. And they were like, what? And I was like, no, no, no. Like, this, the reward is like the learning. Like, this part is like, this, this is it. And they were like, they were just floored. And it's part of like the excitement that comes from the space. It's part of the testament of the good group of the students, you know, and just like, more fun and getting things done so and then it doesn't necessarily um you know need to be about and no uh no no shade thrown to one of my colleagues at a different university but like you don't have to bring juice boxes and pop tarts to like motivate the students right like they're motivated because they're at an amazing school with amazing classmates and they want to go out and you know change the world and it starts with you know every day so that's what the space looks like and then the arrangement at Dalhousie so Dal gets it Mondays and Wednesdays and half yep. a day Friday. Yep. And then Deloitte gets it for Tuesday, Thursdays and half a day Friday. Yeah. Um, and then with what types of, um, I guess, kind of paint the picture a little bit from there. So you would use it um, sometimes in partnership with Dal for social innovation yep. and then sometimes for client work. So this is also like a Deloitte greenhouse. Yeah, so Tuesdays and Thursdays, we uh, try to pack it full with uh, our clients. And so <laughs> having them come in to uh, address their crunchy questions or adaptive challenges, um, for those, again, we layer on the metaphor and, and design the session and, and bring together the right folks from a, a Deloitte perspective. And the unique thing is we now have the opportunity to tap into Dalhousie research mm -hmm. um, and knowledge that we don't anywhere else in the in the Deloitte network when we're doing these labs. So there, there's an added bonus there. Um, and then the joint Friday piece, we're working with folks in the management uh, faculty to create, as you had alluded to, Sam, the social innovation space, where we are able to go to the community combined as Deloitte and Dalhousie to tap into community groups and support them in a way that we wouldn't be able to do individually, but together we think there's great power in helping them to work through some of their crunchy, cha crunchy challenges that they wouldn't normally be able to access us or Dalhousie. So, we're super jazzed about that. 
Um, we do have one on the docket that we're going to uh, hopefully get in in February. So uh, we're super jazzed about being able to just do what we do differently and for different folks. Mm -hmm. And I like to build on that care. I feel so lucky as well to be out here and that we have this partnership to be able yeah. to show up so differently. Like I think that this partnership with Dalhousie allows us to be so unique compared to some of the other greenhouses, just being on that separate institution. And again, having been a student at Dalhousie, it's really awesome too. And having been in the faculty of management as a student, I do know like Dean Brooks and a number of the people that we're partnering with. So now it's really awesome to be able to come back and work with and collaborate with and regularly talk to some of these yeah. professors and faculty members that I really appreciated and looked up to uh, like during my time as a student as well. So it's really awesome. And, and Sam, a special kudos to you, uh, simply because I know we've got stuff coming up in the new year that we've never done before from a Deloitte perspective that I suspect hasn't been done before from a Dalhousie perspective, um, that will give us an opportunity to impact students in a way that we haven't before. So super jazzed about that. Like it really is, um, Enrique see me do it, well, you've seen me do it too, where we sit down and we start talking and ideas just start flowing about all the different things that we can do um, to impact the community, Dalhousie, Deloitte, like to bring it all together in a way that has just never happened before. And the opportunities truly are endless. And, you know, that's that's the part that gets certainly me jazzed. And I know Rika gets on the, the bandwagon <laughs> with me as we start thinking of all the fun things that we can do. Um, but this partnership, I think, has opened doors in ways that we hadn't considered before. Uh, from a direct impact on students. And so thank you for that, for being willing to uh, step mm -hmm. out of the norm with us <laughs> as we yeah. are a bit crazy, like not even <laughs> traditional sort of, here's how we're going to teach. Uh, so that's been super fun for us. And I think, I think it will pay dividends. And if we can get it to work once in a pilot, then the sky's the limit, right? So. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, so, with that, you've been so open to different things that I'm personally interested and passionate about, you know, empowering management learners. Um, typically, my domain tends to be accounting, but it's not limited to accounting learners. It's really, you know, management learners, the ones that we're surrounded with and saying, hey, what's what are items that our stakeholders want? Our stakeholders being our learners, also the community, um, employers, and saying, how can we help bridge the gap? Because when I was teaching in the professional program, when students would say, or candidates there would say, you know, it felt like I learned one thing in university and then I was expected to know something or quickly know something there. So my mission is to hopefully help, you know, just flatten the curve uh, a little bit, I don't know, right? Um, to help bridge the gap in order to connect the two, um, whether it's an actual um, difference or perceived difference, or just the more that we can partnership and the more that we can try out new and cool and fun things, um, that not only will give them the opportunity to experience that, then also perhaps um, observe it as well, right? Observe and hear the stories of, hey, this is what we tried and this went well, and this is, hey, this is what we tried and this is what we'll do better like next time, or this is what we learned from it. And yeah.